Hello everyone. Uh, this is Charles in Chicago. It's Sunday evening, October the 8th. And I have a little bit of news here for you. And um, you can see by the title of um, this uh, video um, that it's called uh, Primary of Conscience. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Uh, after I give you a little bit of news. Well, there really hasn't been much news. It's been pretty quiet. You know, I, I don't want to bring you every little piece of news that there is. A lot of it uh, is just pretty much forgotten the next day. So, um, but about a week ago, uh, <laughs> Cardinal Burke, um, Pope Francis uh, reassigned Cardinal Burke to the uh, Vatican Supreme Court. And he used to be the prelate, which is the head of it, but uh, I guess a couple of years ago, um, Pope Francis let him go. <laughs> but now he's reassigned them, but not as the prelate. Now he's a member, um, and he was named with some other uh, cardinals. So uh, I guess uh, some people see that as the Pope throwing a bone to the enemy. Um, although other people see it in a different way, but uh, what exactly is going on there, who knows. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. All right, so the next little piece of information here is uh, a couple of theologians come out and say that the translation of Amoris Latina, and uh, I'm really getting tired of this, pronouncing this word. I'm just going to call it A-L, uh, from now on. So the translation of AL303 is faulty and they provide a new translation and then of course then there are other theologians who come and say oh no 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 you're wrong there uh, the original translation is correct so so you have uh, talk about that and um, whether or not they're going to change the translation it's just the English translation that they're talking about um, so um, whether that stands or they're gonna tweak it a little bit uh, we'll have to wait and see and then the uh, third interesting piece of information here is uh, Cardinal Kupich who is the Archbishop of Sh my home diocese of Chicago here uh, he and 12 bishops and 20 theologians had a meeting on the 5th and 6th um, in, at Boston College and um, they were brainstorming about how to implement AL uh, into um, uh, Catholic culture and um, um, into Catholicism in America. Now you think, I don't know how many uh, arch, I mean how many cardinals there are uh, in America, I really don't know. But I know each diocese has a bishop and there are 192 dioceses. So 12 of them, 12 of 192, went to this meeting. So it would give you the idea like, you know, there really wasn't much interest in it. But I really don't think that's the case. I think the vast majority of bishops are just being quiet. Um, you know they're uh, they're really in a along with Pope Francis. I mean they're you know if people wonder why he hasn't answered the dubia or the filial correction. Um, he's really in a no-win situation. He can't really please both sides, and it goes to show you how um, uh, the problem is just so fundamental. Um, and um, you know, I mean, you could say I'm a pessimist, but I think in, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm really being a realist here. I don't really see how uh, this could ever get straightened out. Um, God has allowed this to happen, and he's allowed it to happen for very good reason. So um, a lot of bishops are just not, you know, if they're really uh, implementing uh, some changes as far as communion for the divorce, uh, they're doing it quietly, all right? Now, Cardinal Kupich has done that, and he's been public about it, and so has um, Bishop McElroy of San Diego. He gave a directive 
um, that the press got a hold of um, where he told this priest you're, they are to give communion to those who are remarried. Um, so, but most other bishops really don't really have too much to say, but they could be doing this, you know, I mean, who knows, you know, I mean, not only in America, but around the world, who knows how many bishops are having their priests um, implement uh, AL. I mean, we just really don't know. Um, but we, and we do know that it's happening in Argentina, Sicily, Germany, um, here in America to some extent at least. Um, and I think there are a few other countries. I think one is Sweden, um, but I'm not sure about that. So um, I guess, um, you know, people are just really hoping that God will intervene. Um, but you know, God is allowing this. So let's talk about that uh, for a minute here. Um, you know, now, um, if you would ask someone, let's say I told you like I'm on um, Catholic Answers Forum, uh, you know, and they don't really allow, uh, it's one thing they don't allow is uh, uh, speculation about the end time and whatever. But I mean, they, they, do, they did allow one thread that's been around for the last couple of years and occasionally people remark on it. Um, but I mean, this would be one explanation that um, God is allowing this as the uh, final harvest of souls. And now th that's in the Catholic sense. Uh, this, these problems in the, in the church um, will separate out um, the wheat from the chaff. And, um, you know, I mean, if there's going to be a schism, you can't have two Catholic churches. Well, one is going to be a Catholic church, the true Catholic church. The other one's going to be a false church. And um, so in, in terms of um, separating out um, Catholics, um, you know, that, that could be what, what is happening. I mean, it really could be. And, you know, this is part of uh, the scripture of two Thessalonians, which is called the Great Deception. Although the Great Deception ha is much bigger than just what's going on in the church, um, it has to do with the Antichrist um, and him teaming up with what people, some people think uh, Pope Francis is a false prophet. And uh, they, uh, Pope Francis will um, somehow come up with some kind of a quote unquote Christian religion that a lot of Christianity will join. And um, along with the uh, Antichrist, uh, build a new temple to a quote unquote religion, which is really not a religion at all, because, well, it's not based on Christ, that's for sure. Uh, but it's a, um, a secular, um, humanitarian uh, sort of church. So, um, you know, those of you who are interested in this sort of thing, there's um, an awful lot to uh, learn about this. And um, I am pretty familiar with uh, all of Catholic uh, prophecy in the past. And I, I read Catholic prophecy. There's still prophecy coming and, um, you know, prophecies of just five years ago um, are coming true. Um, but then you could argue that they're not, you know. Um, you know, because the prophecies don't really say, this is going to happen. You know, hurricane so-and-so is going to happen on such and such a day. It's never that specific. So, but anyway, um, those of you who are interested in finding out more about generally what's going on, excuse me a minute. <clears throat> um, I would tell you to put into the search box on YouTube, Dr. Kelly Bowring, B-O-W-R-I-N-G. Now, Dr. Bowring is a Catholic uh, theologian in good standing with the church. Um, several years ago, I think maybe about eight years ago, uh, he was a dean of a graduate school of theology at a Catholic university. 
you know, God called him away to focus on the end times, and that's what he does. He's on Facebook, and, um, you know, I mean, I'm one of many people who follow his posts. Um, but uh, the, his latest, he has several videos. Um, his latest video is really an overview of Catholic prophecy and um, some other things like personal experiences and um, some other things. Um, but, uh, you know, if you're interested in watching that, that would give you um, a, a good... Um, a good basic sort of education um, about what's what prophecy is saying is going to be played out. Now, according to the prophecy, there um, uh, the Antichrist is expected very soon to make the public stage. Apparently, he is supposed to um, actually instigate World War Three, which is a nuclear war, which is also the second seal. Um, in the book of Revelation. Um, and then after this war goes on for a little bit of time, it's supposed to be a short war, according to what's being said, um, that uh, he will come forth into the public and actually become the peacemaker. And, um, you know, he would, he'll be held in very high regard and other things happen. Uh, so uh, anyway, Dr. Boring talks about all this kind of stuff. So um, that's it for that. Now, uh, the last time I talked to you, um, I was talking to you about God needs teachers. Um, he needs uh, people who are educated in what's going on in the Catholic Church. Um, he needs uh, those people who are educated to talk with and inform those who just aren't paying attention. And believe me, uh, there has to be an awful lot of people who really don't pay any attention. I mean, I've come across people that go, oh, that kind of stuff's always going on. And, you know, sort of like, who cares? You know, they'll they'll figure it out. That's what our leaders are for, you know, to figure this kind of stuff out. So, um, you know, God needs you um, to um, act as a teacher. So, um, I told you last time that I put up a website called catholic-crisis.info, all right? And um, if, I hope some of you, at least some of you have read what I put there, um, there's a section there that touches on something called the primacy of conscience. Now, the primacy of conscience is something that those who support AL say um, that overrides everything, that um, God talking to you in your soul uh, should what determine what you believe in. Now, there's some real problems with this sort of approach. Um, but I did some research, and um, so I put another page on the website called Primacy of Conscience, and it has some information there about canon law, what canon law says about this, um, what the uh, Catechism of the Catholic Church has to say about it, and um, some information uh, of a couple of articles that I've... Uh, that I was reading about it while I was looking into this. So, um, you know, it's, it's good for you to know personally um, what, what primacy of conscience is and um, also what abusing your conscience is. You know, uh, we need to know these things. So uh, that information there is on the, on the site. So um, a lot of people are looking forward to next Friday, October 13th, the 100th anniversary of the miracle of Fatima and um, whether or not something will happen or not. Now, um, you know, I'll just mention this, that on October 13th, 1884, 
uh, Pope Leo the uh, Thirteenth collapsed. Uh, there were people with him, and when he came to, uh, he said he had a vision of Christ and Satan having a meeting. Um, Satan was bragging that he could destroy the Catholic Church. And Christ said, okay, go ahead and try. Satan says, well, I need more power and I need time. Christ says, I'll give you more power. You have 100 years. Now, whether it was 100 years from right then, people don't think so. Um, They think Christ actually waited uh, 30 years which would be October the 13th, 1917, which is the miracle of Fatima. And the 100 years started then. And so on Friday, if this thinking is correct, this would be the um, the end of the reign of Satan. Although, you know, all the damage he's done, um, you know, will continue and whether, I mean, I suppose he'll, whatever extra power um, Christ gave to him, if in fact this is actually true, will be, um, Christ will take away from him and he'll function like he always has functioned. But, you know, Catholic prophecy is saying, you know, in the next few years, the Antichrist will perform miracles and stuff. So, you know, whether this 100 years even exists, um, whether it's up uh, this Friday or not, I mean, you know, <laughs> these are all problems with prophecy, you know. I mean, it's easy to see, look at prophecy in the past and say, okay, that came true. You know, that's that's what happened with Fatima. It wasn't until, I think, 1932 that the Catholic Church said, um, okay, you know, we're going to okay um we're going to okay the um, um, apparitions at Fatima. Of course, this was after um, uh, Russia became a communist state. So they, the Catholic Church is saying, oh, okay, well, well, well apparently what um, Blessed Mother said here has come true, so we're going we're gonna to approve her apparitions, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, the whole idea of the... Uh, of the apparition, or at least one of the ideas of the apparition, was to get Catholics to pray the rosary so that Russia wouldn't, wouldn't become a, wouldn't become a, uh, a communist state. And of course, people were saying, oh my goodness, holy Russia become a communist state? That's ridiculous. Well, you know, I mean, it was about 15 years later that that actually happened. Excuse me. (coughs) <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, so much for, uh, you know, and there's a, a lot of, a lot of other prophecy, uh, since then, um, uh, Garabandal and, you know, Las, uh, I think Las Salettes before that, but Akita calls for the smoke of Satan to enter the Vatican, um, Our Lady of Good Success, which is an approved apparition back in the 16th century, calls for the smoke of Satan to enter the Vatican. So all this is very fascinating. Uh, Anyway, um, if you have any questions or whatever, you can either leave them in comments or you can find my email address if you want me to point, if you want some other information about this. Um, So I think that's about it uh, for uh, uh, for this video. And um, I guess we'll see what happens on Friday. Uh, I may or may not talk to you. It seems like uh, things are really pretty quiet, uh, but you never know when something's going to happen. Some people are actually hoping that Cardinal Burke will make the formal correction this coming Friday. Um, So that would be interesting if that happens. Well, All right, then, um, enjoy your day, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Bye.